five or six weeks ago, I did a video called, uh, it was one of my on the road series. I think it was number eight. And in that video, I had an issue where I was trying to get one of those Unify access points off the wall and it just was not coming off the wall until I found this tool. This is the sort of Unify device removal tool. And of course, the right tool for the job is always the best option. This came from a company called techtoolsupply.com. And after I had posted that video, even though they didn't know that I was actually gonna promote them in that video, it was just something that, was, that happened organically. Um, they got a lot of traffic to their website and they were like, where's this traffic coming from? So they reached out to me when they figured it out and they said, hey, listen, if there's any other tools you wanna try out, just let us know. And so of course, I love tools, right? I love different tools, especially tech tools, right? And since I just moved into this new house, I do have a lot of wires to pull. This house has basically coaxial cable everywhere, but it does have a really nice attic. And if I have the right tools, I can actually replace a lot of the coaxial connections in this house with good Cat6 cabling. So that's what we're gonna do today with some of these new tools that I have from techtoolsupply.com. And if you guys are interested in these same tools, they were also nice enough to provide a coupon code uh, for various special offers that I will have details about on the screen here as well as down below in the description. So what did they send me? First of all, I'll start over here. This is the Magna Pool. Okay, so this is a way to get cables through a wall with a magnet. Basically, it's very simple. You have this incredibly strong magnet here, and then you have this sort of like metal shuttle right here, which can go through the wall. Now, this is very, <laughs> this is a very strong magnet, as you can tell. Uh, and so you basically put this in your wall and then you stick the magnet part on the outside of the drywall. It magnets together and then this rolls down the wall. So you can basically pull your cables which are attached to the end of this thing straight down the wall. So what comes in this kit? We get of course the little metal shuttle here. We get the very strong magnet. Keep that away from any old school hard drives. And then you get some, looks like some chains. I'm not sure exactly what you'd use the chains for. Let's see if there's like hooks on them or something. Nope, it's just a chain. So I'm not exactly sure what the chain's all about. Uh, but this should allow you to pull stuff through drywall. It should also, oh, it says jack chain wall drop. So I'm not a cable installer. A lot of this stuff is brand new to me. Uh, what I am gonna be using this for is running this through the wall to get cables down the wall. Uh, also, this is good for under carpet, right? So if you wanna run under the carpet, this magnet works very well. And it comes with this sheet of instruction that gives various instructions for a hollow wall dropping, insulated wall dropping, steel stud wall dropping, under carpet, and then the jack chain wall drop, which again, I don't know what that is, but uh, you know, I will if I ever run into a situation where I have to do a jack chain wall drop. Okay, so that's the first tool. The second tool, the second tool is also pretty awesome. Let me put this down. So this is a kit. This is the cable ferret kit. It comes with the cable ferret, which we're gonna talk about in a second. And it also comes with a sort of standard push-pull rod kit. Now this one got a little bit damaged in shipping, but these are just, you know, plastic rods made to go down the wall. It's not gonna damage these things at all. They're perfectly fine. So this is the wire push-pull set. This is a 30-foot kit, and it has a couple of different heads on it for, you know, making sure that you can get through insulation and stuff like that. Uh, that's pretty standard, though. What's not standard is the cable ferret Wi-Fi. This thing is pretty slick. So what this is, is this little tiny guy right here. Now this is uh, got a battery inside. You can charge it with USB type C and then we get a light, okay? And it's a camera and it's a very small, tiny camera. And so the notion here is that this has these connectors for going onto the push pull rod and then you can stick this down into a cavity uh, where you can't reach or where you can't see. And then you can use your phone to watch the feed from the camera over Wi-Fi, right? So this is a very, very handy tool. It also comes with a number of sort of accessories here. Let me turn the light off so we're not wasting battery. 
So it comes with a number of accessories. Uh, this one is a telescoping rod, right? So if you wanted to sort of bend around a corner, you can put it on the end of this rod right here. Then we have another standard uh, rod that can affix to the front of this thing. And then it comes with some adapters for the push-pull rod. These look like uh, male to female adapters. It has a hook that you can tie onto the front of here. And it also has a magnet attachment. So if, for instance, I was working with this ubiquity tool and I dropped it down in a crevice somewhere, I can use my push-pull rod with this camera, the magnet attached to the end of the camera, and I can come down and we can retrieve that tool. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I think it'll actually do like bigger tools too, like a screwdriver. Yeah, look at that, right? So if you're careful, I don't think it'll, like it'll, it'll come off pretty easy, but if you're careful, you could even pick up something like a screwdriver from a crevice somewhere. That's really neat. The Cable Ferret also has a really funny uh, installation video or usage video at techtoolsupply.com. If you guys go check that out, uh, I got a couple of laughs out of their, uh, the usage video for this thing. It's really funny. All right, so before I get started using any of these tools, I do want to preface this with, I am not a cable pulling expert. I do not pull cables through walls for a living. I have never done that for a living. I am a novice at pulling cables through walls. So that being said, do not take this as an instructional video, but if you're gonna take anything from this video, learn from my mistakes, <laughs> all right? Rather than, uh, I'm gonna teach you through the mistakes that I make, in other words. So one thing I do strongly, strongly believe in though, is that having the right tools for the job makes a tremendous difference and gets you so much closer to success. So I'm really glad that I have these tools. I'm gonna start by just playing around with this cable ferret and uh, seeing if I can uh, get some video of the inside of my walls. And uh, then we are going to try to run a line. I've got a couple spots over here in the corner where I wanna get a line up into my attic. And from my attic, I'm gonna put in my USW industrial switch uh, on the wall. And then from there, I can kind of fan connections out to other areas of the house. So it's gonna be a big project. I'm not gonna get all of it done in this video, but I did wanna get started and I wanted to show you guys these tools because I am super stoked to just play around with these, let alone actually use them successfully. So, all right, all that being said, let's get started. So yes, many, many mistakes were made. Now, rather than make you watch all of these painful lessons on my part, I figured it'd be a better idea just to do a voiceover and cover everything that I learned. So the first area that I wanted to run some Cat6 cables was right here in the corner of my office. I wanted two Cat6 cables from the floor up to this unused electrical box near the ceiling. I'll be using that for an office camera and then the spare connection is gonna be for you know testing equipment or access points or cameras or whatever I happen to be testing. So I started by opening the box at the top which used to have one coax connection and one RJ11 phone connection. I clipped both of these out and then drilled a hole at the bottom to run the new Cat6 cables. I wanted to do some testing with the cable ferret Wi-Fi camera, but being that this is an exterior wall, it's just filled with insulation. And so I really couldn't get the camera very far up into the hole. We're gonna get back to that cable ferret a little bit later. My first mistake when attempting to run wires through this wall was that I tried to run two Cat6 cables directly, first with the magnet pole and then by using the wall rods. Since I wanted to run two Cat6 cables simultaneously, I pulled out enough length of cable and then bent it in half. I attached the bent section to the magnet pole with electrical tape and then tried to get it up the wall. But with the insulation in the wall, it just didn't work. The resistance of the cables trying to get past the insulation was just too much for the magnet pole. I then tried using the wall rods, and this actually worked okay in that I was able to get the wall rods all the way up through the insulation, but I still made the mistake of trying to get the Cat6 cables through the wall attached directly to the wall rod. They only made it part of the way up the wall, and then I pulled on them a little bit too hard, and the cables disconnected from the wall rod, causing me to slam my hand against the ceiling and actually took some skin off of one of my knuckles. You can see a Band-Aid on my finger in some of the subsequent footage here. After smashing my finger against the ceiling, I realized that I was missing something, and that something was polyline. So rather than pulling cables through the wall directly, 
Man, it's just so much easier to pull some lightweight poly line through the walls instead. Once the poly line was through, I was able to attach the Cat6 cables to the poly line and they pulled through the wall very easily. All right, so here we have the poly line just uh, double knotted to the back of the shuttle portion of the magnet pool. We're gonna stick that into the wall down here. And we're gonna grab it with the magnet. Now I can feel that that is on there. So we're gonna start pulling up slowly. And as you can see, it is pulling right through the wall. And of course, you can sort of feel if it lets go, which so far it has not. And I've got plenty of slack here. So there's no resistance on the line whatsoever. When I had done this with just regular Cat5 or Cat6 cables, uh, there was too much resistance from the Cat6 cables and it did not work. So I'm using this poly line, which is of course much lighter than a Cat6 cable, and it seems to pull straight through the wall, no problem. All right, so I got it all the way up there and I should be able to just pull it out the top. There we go. So now I've got my first line pulled through. I can tell already that this would work a lot better if you had two people, one person doing the feeding of the cable and another person, uh, you know, pulling at the other end. Uh, unfortunately, it's just me today, so yeah, I'm having to sort of go back and forth from the top to the bottom to sort of straighten out the bottom cables and make sure they're feeding in properly. So there we go, two cables through, and now I'm gonna cut this here, and then I'll basically uh, tie these off for now, because I'm not gonna terminate them right away. I wanna get the next set of cables that's going up even further into the attic. I wanna get those done first uh, before uh, I actually terminate these ones and close everything up. Now we get to our next big mistake. One of the goals I had for this project was to get some sort of network connectivity up here in my attic. In this case, I'm using the USW Industrial, this is a great switch and it should be able to put up with the you know, more extreme temperatures, you know, super cold in the winter and super warm in the summertime uh, of my attic environment. But from here, I can take an input and sort of fan it out around the house and just more easily distribute Cat6 to other areas. I had also taken the time to build and paint this backboard for the switch and any other components that I might want to have up here. This 1U24 port keystone patch panel is from Cable Matters, and uh, I'll make sure that I have a link to this as well as all of the equipment that I use in this video down in the description below. So it was easy enough to get the backboard and switch mounted up here, but from that spot down in my office, I thought I could just use the wall rods to push another piece of polyline up through the wall and directly into my attic. But what ended up happening is I got three or four minutes of footage of me poking at the underside of a 4x4 beam that caps off the wall cavity at the top, which I'm pretty sure is a standard thing when it comes to wood framing and drywall constructed houses. There's just no way to get a cable through the top of a wall cavity without drilling a hole. And the way that my roof sits and the way that this HVAC ducting sits, there's realistically no easy way to get to that exterior wall and drill a hole down into the wall cavity. I mean, you could do it if you absolutely had to, but in my case, I went for plan B, which was to move where my cross connect terminates down in my office to a section of wall that's much, much easier to get to. The exterior wall where I ran my first set of cables is right here behind me. Now from this wall, I can't get up into the attic because there's a ridge cap above the wall cavity and I can't get down from the top to drill a hole because there's just really no easy way to access this exterior wall from up in the attic. So instead, if we come off of this wall to this side wall here and we go about six feet over, it's much, much easier to access from the attic. And as an added bonus, there's no insulation in this interior wall. It's just an empty wall cavity and a, basically a free fall drop straight down. So what I had to do here was first measure to find the interior wall that I wanted to use for the cross connect up in my attic. I basically found that interior wall first. 
Then I moved away some of the attic insulation to clear a path to the 4x4 that caps off the interior wall cavity. I also used a piece of plywood to bridge the gap between the cross beams in the attic to give myself a more stable platform to work from. Once I knew where to drill, I used a 3 quarter inch drill bit to drill down through the 4x4. Once I was all the way through, I then attached some polyline to the Magnapool metal shuttle piece and dropped it down into the cavity. Since there's no insulation in the wall, it was basically a free fall drop all the way down. So I measured out about 8 feet of the polyline by hand and then tied it off. Back down in my office, I was then able to pretty easily find the Magnapool shuttle with the magnet and then I drilled a hole below that point. Once the hole was drilled, the Magnapool shuttle and the polyline came right through the wall and I was able to pull down that Cat6 cable from the attic which I had attached to the polyline. Once I had the Cat6 line in hand, I terminated it to a Cat6 keystone jack and attached it to a single keystone wall plate. Back in the attic, I terminated the other end of the cable to a Cat6 keystone jack and then plugged it into the 24 port 1U Cable Matters keystone patch panel. The cable tested out okay and so then I plugged it into the USW Industrial and I was able to adopt the switch into Unify. And so that's where we are now. At this point, I'm feeling a lot more confident about my ability to sort of run cables through the house. I've definitely learned a lot, but there's still a little bit more to be done here. I still need to cable manage the cable up in the attic a little bit better. And I also still wanted to test out that cable ferret. So before I button up the hole down here in my office, let's take a look at that cable ferret and see if we can't get some pictures of the insides of my walls. All right, so I've got the cable ferret attached to the end of one of these push rods and we're gonna go ahead and stick it in the wall cavity and I guess just see what we see uh, as far as running wires for this particular house the cable ferret was not really that useful but I can definitely see it being useful in you know certain circumstances where you do need to get into some sort of wall cavity uh, that you don't have access to. So as we can see down here, I have a Wi-Fi connection going from my phone to this device right here. And we're just gonna go ahead and start sliding it up into the wall. And there we can see my wall cavity. Let's see if I can twist it around or anything. Uh, and at some point, we should, oh, there we go, wait, I don't know if you can see that, but, all right, that's about as far as I can get in there. Let's see if I can twist it around. I'm trying to see the cable. Yeah, so I don't really see the cable that I ran down. It's probably because it's behind the cable ferret. So I can't really see the cable, and I think I'd have to get another push rod to actually see the hole at the top of the cavity. Let me take it back out and then I'm going to see what it looks like going uh, downwards instead of upwards. All right, there's the cable ferret. Let's go down instead. And if we look down, uh, we can see that basically we're going to hit another, like I wouldn't be, there's no, the cavity doesn't continue downwards. So it's basically we can see that inside here, yeah, so straight down, I'd have to drill down again if I wanted to get down into the first level of my home. All right, try going up one more time. We're gonna try a different angle this time. Up oh, there's the cable. So now we can kind of see the cable that's going through the wall cavity. But I'm not really able to see much up the wall at all. Alright, so pulling it back out now. So yeah, I mean there we can see the cable ferret definitely works, <laughs> but again it's not so useful, at least not for what I'm using it for. Uh, again, if you're in the trade though, 
and you think this would be useful for something that you do on a daily basis, put that down in the comments below. I'd love to see your thoughts on, uh, on where you think something like this cable ferret could be most useful. All right, now that those lines are pulled, I've successfully laid the foundation for some network expansion around my home. I've got some additional cross connects here in my office for testing equipment, and I've got that CAT6 cross connect up to the USW industrial switch in my attic that's gonna allow me to fan out and do some other cable runs to areas around my house. I've already got a lot of good ideas working uh, where I can use that industrial switch. Most importantly though, I learned about running cables through walls. And at least now I know that running cables vertically through the walls isn't such a big deal. As for these tools, uh, the push-pull rods are an excellent tool to have in your tool belt. And I'm, I'm actually sure I probably could have done most of this same work that I did with the magnet pool with these rods. So I'm really glad to have these in my arsenal now. Uh, as far as the cable ferret goes, the jury's kind of still out on the cable ferret in my opinion. Now it seems like a very useful tool in theory and it definitely works, right? I was able to get in and explore areas inside my walls that would have been hard to see otherwise, but for my purposes, it wasn't very helpful. Now your mileage may vary on that. And again, if you find the cable ferret useful or if you use it in your day-to-day -day activities, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear about that. To me though, the star of the show is this magnet pool. Now, especially when you're using the magnet pool with some of that lightweight polyline, it was just a champ at going through the wall. I mean, even this exterior wall that was filled with insulation. Uh, I can see myself using the magnet pool a lot in the future. So I do wanna say a big thank you to techtoolsupply.com who sent me these tools to try out. Uh, much appreciated. And if you're interested in purchasing any of these tools, head over to techtoolsupply.com and take a look at what they've got. If you use coupon code CHRIS10 at checkout, I'll put that on the screen here, you can get 10% off any cable ferret or magna pull product. And there's a few different variations. You know, the cable ferret comes on its own or it comes with the push pull rod as a kit and they're already on massive discount. So this is 10% on top of the discounted cable ferret uh, pricing that's already out there. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions for more content just like this. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you gently caress that like button. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.